I love you. <laughs> um, so in talking about thinking, I know this has an obvious answer, and I'm actually asking beyond this. But where do our thoughts come from? You know, so oftentimes I'll, I'll have thoughts and I, I recognize them as even not my own, or, or possibly patterns that have existed for years and years. You know, jealousy thoughts or competitive thoughts or the thoughts of being threatened and fear. But truthfully, is this something, is waking us up in the middle of the night that you were just talking about? What is that? Is, is, it a, is it just part of the condition of being alive? Thank you. The Buddha was asked a similar question. Uh, I'll tell you what he said, but then I'll, I'll, I will answer it because he didn't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, somebody asked him a question like that and he, he gave a parable. He said, uh, you've got somebody shot you with an arrow. You've got an arrow stuck in your body. And before you remove it, you're trying to find out where did that arrow come from? Before I remove it, I need to know who shot it and why and where it came from. <laughs> Let's examine this in more detail. Um, and th that was his answer. Uh, what he was saying was our main concern should be to remove the arrow instead of trying to find out where it all started. How did it all start? Where did it all originate? That was, his, his teaching was very practical, totally practical. Uh, not all of Buddhism is that <laughs> practical anymore. Some of it still remains practical compared to other traditions. But in the, the very beginning of the Buddhist teaching was just totally practical. Remove the arrow. The arrow, of course, stands for suffering, any form of suffering that is self-generated mm -hmm. through the mind. And, okay, so that was his answer. Now, of course, I agree with that, and I'm sure we all do. Thought, going a little bit beyond it, thought is, there's, a, there's such a thing as the collective mind, and so many thoughts are not your thoughts, really, they arise in the collective mind, they are energy fields or energetic entities that one could almost think of them as little bubbles floating around. Uh, they may not be literally true, I haven't actually seen any bubbles, but <laughs> little bubbles, thought forms floating around, and if, if the thought form discovers any resonance with anything inside you, for example, any form of negativity, and then there's a thought form in the collective mind, uh, an even heavier thought form of negativity. For just a slight irritation about what somebody said today. And then there's another thought form that, vi that resonates with that negativity, and then that little, that bubble comes. <laughs> and before you know it, the irritation has become something bigger. <laughs> so you, you connect you with the universal mind and it moves through you. So when we deal with our so-called our own minds, we are far more than our own minds. And whatever awareness arises in you is not just your benefit, it has an impact on the totality of the collective mind. When awareness arises in you, it means awareness is arising in the collective mind of humanity. Mm. So it's not, just, it's not just a personal thing. In the same way that any thinking that takes possession of your mind is not really personal. There is no personal thought as such. It pretends mm. to be personal. Mm -hmm. It's the human collective mind. In the same way, of course, any emotion generated by that is not, it's, it looks like my emotion, but it's either it's, it's anger or it's sadness or it's 
jealousy or it's whatever this. And that's basically, it's the same in everybody when it arises. Mm -hmm. It attaches itself to slightly different stories in the mind of why I'm angry, but the anger is anger, mm -hmm. human anger. So, again, it's not, it's not, it's not yours, it's, you pick it up and then it gets hold of you and then many humans live virtually with a mind that has taken possession of them, pretends to be them and they're stuck with it without even knowing it. If they knew it, they would be the beginning of freedom. Mm. They don't know it and if you tell them they are, they get angry, but they don't, they are, the mind does because it feels threatened. <laughs> so there's still humans who, you, who won't hear this, they can't hear this because immediately they would feel threatened by it because they're total, totally possessed by the mind. Um, you can see how, for example, certain collective thought forms can take possession of an entire country, such as happened, for example, during communism, Soviet communism in Russia, Maoism in China, millions of people all thinking the same thing. <laughs> and the, but even in our society, it's, it's not, not, not necessarily one monolithic thought form as such as that, but different, there are different thought forms through the media become perpetuated and without knowing it, often the, they are our most basic assumptions, how we interpret the universe and the world around us, our basic assumption are thought forms that come out of the collective, have taken possession of us, and they're all forms that consciousness takes in the mind. Mm -hmm. And that's all fine in itself. It's fine if there is an awareness, but if thought is all there is, it becomes destructive and insane without awareness. Of course, your next question, if you want to carry that is, why? <laughs> <laughs> How did it all start? Uh -huh. <laughs> Where does it come from? And that's the arrow again. Right. And yeah, in fact, uh, my friend Jen and I use the phrase, when you ask why, that is the lie. Yeah. You know, just the need. Yes. to let it go. But the thing that occurred when you shared your answer, thank you, um, is that the thinking isn't something I need to war against, but rather it's a tool. And it's showing me where I'm allowing myself to identify with something that I'm not, yes. and thus identify with being separate yes. from this one. So yes. It's a wonderful tool. Yes. That is ultimately powerless in the face of consciousness. Is that correct? Yes. If you are identified with thinking, you say powerless, yes, because you are not there. You are absent, virtually absent, or completely asleep when you're identified with thinking. So you are being run by patterns, or on the collect karmic collective patterns, mental patterns. Right. And so your true power comes as you wake up out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Edgar. Thank you.